Hey guys, Darren East here. You're wanting to know more about this Express Design for Power Apps. What is Express Design for Power Apps? It's a new feature that empowers you to import a design directly into Power Apps. And it will generate an application for you rather quickly. So what can you import as a design? Well, you can import a PDF, you can import a PowerPoint design. A lot of people use PowerPoint for designing screens. Or you can create a hand-drawn sketch. That's pretty cool. Uh, there's also another option, is if you're a designer who uses Figma, which is something I knew very little about, you can actually import import a design that you've created there in that software and Power Apps will create that design for you. And this is all based on the new artificial intelligence technology that they've been building for the Power Platform. So behold, this great design that I've created in Microsoft Paint. I thought about grabbing an envelope out of my mailbox, turning it around and just drawing out a sketch or even taking a, a, a paper towel and try to sketch something out. But then I'm like, you know, why don't we just create an ugly sketch in Microsoft Paint and see if that works. So I thought a fairly useful application that we could build in Power Apps quickly from a sketch would be an expense report. All right, well, let's move over here into Power Apps. You should now see two items here at the bottom here. We can import an image or we can import something from Figma here. So I'm gonna pick image and it's gonna guide you here. It's gonna tell you, do this, don't do this. So it's looking for a fairly simple, straightforward diagram. It doesn't want you to use any type of colored backgrounds. I'm going to click on next. It doesn't want you to import something that it refers to as a complex form. Okay, so if you have a paper form or perhaps a PDF that you that was created, it may not do well with that. It's wanting something very simple and straightforward. Let's move to the third example here. Uh, you can do multi-page forms. So for this purpose, my Microsoft Paint sketch is gonna work great. All right, so this is just instructing you on what it could use and what perhaps would cause you problems. Now I'm gonna click on next here at the bottom and look at that. It's gonna give us a little wizard style like stepper here to the side and let's give it a name here. Let's call this expense report. Okay. And I'm going to upload my own. I'm going to choose a file here. I'm going to pick my screen sketch. And it's recommending a phone app. And I believe why it recommends a phone app is that it's going to create a single column of fields. And it's going to look best in that format. I've used a tablet the first time through. And it just ended up having a lot of wasted white space on the screen. So I'm going to go with this recommendation here. Now I realize this is a new feature. And as time goes on, they're going to refine this and and make this a little more polished. All right, I'm gonna click on next. It's identifying the components and it picked everything up. And I intentionally did not line the left sides of these things up on either side. And it looks like it picked up everything all right. So the ones that are highlighted in yellow, these are gonna be rendered as text labels. It's gonna be display information. And over here on the screen, we, uh, as you see here on the side, it says text input. So you go over here and if I actually click on it, you don't wanna right click on it, you just select it with a left click and you can actually tell it what data type uh, of control you want to use for that field. So full name text input would be appropriate for that. An email address department. Well, let's let's look at department here. Perhaps I want this to be a drop down. I don't see drop down here, but I do see combo box. So I'm going to select combo box date of expense. Well, we want to make sure this is a date picker. So I'm going to click date picker there and you see it's changing the colors here and the the colors are being defined over here on the right. Expense description. Well, perhaps I want this to be more of like a text area. Maybe I want to ha uh, provide two or three lines for them to actually type out a description. Payment type. I might create that as a combo box or even radio buttons. How about that? Let's use radio buttons because we could have three choices. Um, cash, check or charge, something like that. Expense category. I'd like to use a drop down, but um, since I don't see a drop down. I'm going to click on combo box and expense total. So this will probably be a text input and I'll probably want that to be set up so that it only accepts numbers and, and probably format that as currency. All right. And down here at the bottom, I'm going to click on this. I do see a control type of button and I want that to be the submit button. So I'm going to click button. Okay. So I've set all that up and now I'm going to click on the next button at the bottom. And we do have two choices here. We can either create a new table in the Dataverse 
or it says skip for now. It's not giving me choices for Excel or SharePoint. So it looks like we're going to be making the leap to the Dataverse here. I've recently done a poll. If you haven't done so, will you go over to, into the community tab on my YouTube channel and answer a poll that I just put up today. And in this poll, I ask what data source you guys use most frequently. So you have two choices, either use Dataverse here or skip. So I'm going to keep the Dataverse option here and I'm going to click on next. Hey, if you're getting anything helpful out of this, a comment or even a like really helps the channel. And that's people like you know this is good content. Much appreciated. All right. So now we're taken back to this, each of these here. So some of these that I picked as drop down boxes uh, have been changed to just text. OK, and we can use those controls, let's say a combo box to have multiple values and it could be string type of column. So reading the top here, draw boxes or tags around the items that should form a column in a data table. All right, so let's click on the first one here. So we're gonna click on each of these and this is actually the information that you would normally provide as you're building out a Dataverse table. All right, so I'll go through these one by one. I'll click on first name. This looks fine to me. So I've typed text, all right, click on email address. Now here, this is where I could pick an email address instead, okay? So that is useful if you ever try to build a model-driven application out of this design department. Now what would be nice here is if it allowed us to actually say, hey, we want this to be a choice column and provide all the choices for all the different departments in our organization. So it's not gonna do that. So we'll just leave it as text for now. Date of expense. Okay, so we do have date selected there. That's good. Just want to make sure the data types are right. The description. So we have text. I don't see text area. So I'm going to leave it as is. Okay, so for payment type, again, this was something that I think we picked radio buttons for. Uh, and we'll, we can go ahead and leave it as text because we don't have a uh, type choice. Okay, moving on to expense category. We're going to leave that as text. Now expense total. This will be an entered number. So um, I'm going to pick decimal because, um, you know, if we're going to store a currency, we're going to need those two decimal places. So that's good. We'll leave it as that decimal. That's it. That's what we'll do. Let's go ahead and click on next. Hopefully it's going to create a better looking screen than what I've <laughs> dreamed up inside of Microsoft Paint. All right. So it's going to show us what all it's going to create. OK, I'm going to click on the create button down below. Now, notice that we could change the name of the table here. Expense report. I'm going to leave it as is for now. I'm going to click create. All right, guys, this is our generated application. I'm going to show you what you get. You get a, a screen one. You get a form for editing the fields. You have a button at the bottom. If you click on the button, it already has a submit form in there. And then we have a label at the top that sort of gives the heading. OK, this technology, this express design is a great idea. And I hope they really develop this. It's sort of cool, I, I would have to admit. And we just get pretty much the basic type of app. I don't know that I would recommend you creating your power applications this way. If you're an absolute beginner and want to give this feature a try, I'd say go for it. Absolutely. And uh, I hope as time goes on, this becomes much more polished and perhaps we would create a few more screens to allow us to manage this data. Let me show you a different way of doing this that perhaps would require just as much of investment and would give you more juice for the squeeze, so to speak. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go to a different tab here. If you go into make.powerapps.com and you were to go and you already had a Dataverse table already created, you could just simply create on Dataverse. And instead of a doing a sketch, let's say we just went into Dataverse and just defined a table, okay? So we do have this expense report table that was already created for us by doing this little express design sketch. So I'm just gonna pick that. So I'm just gonna select that, click on connect, and let's see what Power Apps has already been able to do for us for a long time now. So look at what we get here. We have a browse screen. Okay, so we have a single record in here. If I go to details, we can display records and here's the edit screen. So we could go in and we can pick out more fields that we actually want to have on here, such as the email address, such as the department, the date of the expense, all these fields, we can add those. Going this route actually seems to give you a lot more for the amount of effort you're putting in. So again, if you're a complete beginner, creating apps like this in a very uh, simple 
a few steps to get up and going is completely fine and encouraged. But what I would suggest is that you actually learn how to build your applications in a much more methodical way, getting your hands dirty, opening up the uh, Power App Studio, creating your Dataverse tables, and actually creating your apps within the Power Apps environment here. What do you guys think? Would you mind leaving in the comments below on if you're going to be using this Express Design? I'd love to hear from you. Guys, for some reason, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video next. Let's see if they're right. Or you can select this playlist, which I've selected for you based on the content you're currently watching. Guys, got to hurry. Click one of them. Otherwise, YouTube's going to autoplay some other video.